Hi there. Welcome back to Stories with Grandma Joan. <laughs> Today we're going to read Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's Farm, Chapter 5, Part 2. So I hope you remember what happened in Chapter 5, Part 1. When Mr. Heatherwick came home, starving and hoping for an apple pie, or maybe a hot fresh chocolate cake, he found his wife crying in the kitchen. She said, this is the worst day I have ever had, and I'm sure Morton is going blind. Oh, my gosh, how awful, said Mr. Heatherwick. Where is he? Up in his room, said Mrs. Heatherwick. Wick. So Mr. Heatherwick tore up the stairs and burst in on Morton, who was carefully finishing his painting of a cowboy roping a wild steer. Hi, Dad, he said, not looking up. Oh, son, said Mr. Heatherwork. That's a wonderful painting. How do you do it? Do you feel around with your fingers? Of course not, said Morton. I just look at it and paint. Look at it, said Mr. Heatherwork. Can you see? Of course I can see, said Morton. I've got the best eyesight in our schoolroom. The nurse said so. So Mr. Heatherwick went downstairs and told Mrs. Heatherwick Wick that Morton had the best eyesight in school, and Mrs. Heatherwick Wick told him the thimble and the comb and Taglog's brush and the comb and the turpentine and the popcorn and the popcorn popper and the croquet balls. Well, said Mr. Heatherwick, let's see if I can find a switch. Oh, not that, said Mrs. Heatherwick. Not physical punishment, Justin. There must be a better way. What about Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, then, said Mr. Heatherwick. That's it, said Mrs. Heatherwick. That's the answer. I'll call her right now. Friday morning, when Morton was due to arrive, Nels Larson came galloping up on Charlie, his old white horse, and told Mrs. Piggle Wiggle that he had seen a huge coyote in his wheat field. He's after something, he said. Has Artibus had her calf? I don't think so, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. I tried to bring her in the barn last night to give her some hay, but she wouldn't come. She didn't have any calf with her, though. I watched her for some time. She's in the middle section of the pasture, the one with the stream running through it. Well, said Nels, if I were you, I'd keep an eye on her. You know how cows are about hiding their calves. If she wouldn't come in the barn last night, chances are she has had her calf and is hiding it. That old coyote knows it, too. As soon as I saw him, I went up to the house and got my gun. But of course he'd gone when I got back. They're the sneakiest animals they are. There are those coyotes. Just then, Morton's father drove up and delivered Morton. I'm certainly glad to see you, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, hugging Morton. I need somebody with sharper eyes and faster legs than mine. Why? asked Morton, choking, stroking Charlie's nose. Because Mr. Larton, Larson here saw a coyote in his wheat field, and we think Artibus has had her calf and hidden it. If the coyote finds it before we do, he'll kill it. Don't worry, Mrs. Pigwiggle. I'll find that old calf for you, Morton said. Well, bye, Dad. I got work to do. Goodbye, son, said Mr. Heatherwick. Be good and help Mrs. Pigwiggle all you can. Of course I will, said Morton, dropping his suitcase, his box of games, his bow and arrow, his paint box, and his draw drawing paper in a heap by the back steps. Then, stripping off his jacket and throwing it on top of the other things, he said, Now, where did you say that old calf might be, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle? Here, get up here with me, said Nels, reaching down for Morton's hand. I'll ride you over and show you. Yes, said Morton, when he was astride the horse in front of Nels. Say, Dad, look at me. I'm riding horseback like a cowboy. Giddy up, said Nels, and Charlie slowly meandered off in the direction of the wheat field. After he had shown Morton where the coyote had been, Nels took him to the middle pasture where Artibus was. They got off Charlie and walked over to Artibus, who was over by the north fence, eating clover. Hi, old girl, said Nels, slapping her on the side. Artibus blinked her eyes and chewed her clover. Morton said, gosh, she's pretty. Do you think I can learn to milk her? Of course, said Nels. But first, you'd better find her calf. When you do find it, let me know, and I'll carry it up to the barn. Then Nels rode away on Charlie, and Morton sat down in the clover by Artibus and thought about the calf. I'd like to have a little calf of my very own, he thought. I'd have it sleep with me and take it to school with me, just like a dog. 
I'd name it Pal, and when it grew up and was a big dangerous bull, I'd ride it in the rodeo. When Martin was busy, while Martin was busy with these thoughts, Artibus lay down and began to chew her cud. Martin thought this was nice and friendly of her. He said, you're a nice old girl, Artibus, and I won't let any old coyote get your calf. I'll find it and then we'll put it in the barn where it'll be safe. And Artibus just closed her eyes. While he had been talking, Morton had been running his fingers through the clover. He felt something round and kind of soft. <laughs> he looked down and saw that he had a fat, red, wild strawberry in his hand. He put it in his mouth. It was warm and sweet and delicious. Oh boy, said Morton, wild strawberries. I'll bring some back to Mrs. Pigglewiggle. So crawling on his hands and knees, he began to pick the little strawberries and put them in his handkerchief. He had about a cupful when he looked up and saw a small brown rabbit watching him. Hey, bunny, he said, sitting back on his heels and absentmindedly putting a handful of the strawberries in his mouth. There's a picture of him and the rabbit. The bunny hopped away and Morton followed him. Then the bunny disappeared down a hole near a log. Morton put his hand way down the hole, but he couldn't feel anything but dirt. He was quite disappointed and rather tired, <clears throat> so he laid down the grass on his back and looked up at the sky. A big chicken hawk was flying around in the clear spring sky. He moved slowly and in big circles. Then a meadow lark began to sing. He stood on a fence post and tossed his song into the air. The clear, sweet notes floated around in the sunshine like soap bubbles. A beetle as shiny and black as licorice crawled over Morton's fingers and went charging into the deep grass. I sure like to live in the country, said Morton. I guess I'll go down to the stream and find a willow tree. I feel like making a willow whistle. So he went down to the stream and he found a willow tree and he also found a big green frog, a little yellow water snake, two crickets and a handful of periwinkles. He put the periwinkles in his handkerchief with the rather squashed strawberries. He put the green frog inside his shirt he put the crickets in his back pocket and carried the snake. Boy, Mrs. Pigglewiggle will be glad, he said as he ambled across the pasture toward home. Of course, when he tried to go under the fence, the crickets got away. He chased them for a while and finally gave up. The sun was pretty hot anyway. There were lots of crickets. He sat down in the middle of a maple tree and took out Pal, his frog. He'd forgotten all about Pal, the little cat, Pal, the little calf he was going to find. Pal the frog was a beautiful shade of green with yellow with a yellow stomach. He swelled up his throat and blinked his eyes at Martin. Martin said, when we get home, I'll make you a little bed out of a matchbox and you can sleep in my room. I'll cl catch flies for you and you can swim in the watering trough. Pal said, ribbit. My, but it was a peaceful there under the maple tree. Martin closed his eyes. A little breeze rifled through his hair. He fell asleep. When he woke, it was afternoon. Pal was gone and he was very hungry. Grabbing up the handkerchief with the periwinkles and squashed strawberries in it, he ran across the field over the hill. Through the little woods, up by the barn, and on to Mrs. Pigglewiggle's back porch he ran. She was in the kitchen making peanut butter cookies. Oh, Morton, she said, you wonderful boy, you found the calf. I knew you would, the calf, said Morton taking six of the hot peanut butter cookies and cramming three of them into his mouth. What calf? Artibus's calf, Mrs. Pigwiggle said. You know, the one she had hidden. You went out to look for her hours ago. Oh, that calf, said Morton. I, I couldn't find it, but I brought you some wild strawberries. And he opened his handkerchief and showed Mrs. Pigwiggle the strawberries all smashed and mixed in with the periwinkles. Periwinkles, she said, ugh. They don't look very good, do they, Morgan said, Morton said. I guess I must have sat on them or something. And he took six more cookies. Where did you look for the calf, asked Mrs. Pigglewiggle. Oh, round in the grass, Morton said. He, he wasn't anywhere. Did you look down by the stream, asked Mrs. Pigglewiggle. Yes, said Morgan. I found a little frog. I named him Pal. And he had a yellow stomach. Gee, he was cute. He ran away, though, when I fell asleep. Asleep, said Mrs. Piggle. Wiggle. You mean you've been sleeping while Artemis's poor little calf is lying out in the field 
prey for some horrible coyote? I was kind of tired from picking all those strawberries, so I just took a little nap, Morton said, reaching for more cookies. Mrs. Pigglewickle looked at the dozen or so strawberries and then at Morton. She said, I am very, very disappointed in you, Morton. You haven't been looking for the calf at all, and the sun is going down, and pretty soon it will be night, and the coyote will come sneaking down from the hills and find the little calf and kill it. You should be ashamed of yourself, Morton. Very ashamed. Apparently you don't love animals at all. Uh, but I do, said Morton. I was going to find that old calf and name him Pal and raise him up to be a big bull and everything. But then I saw those strawberries, and then I chased the rabbit, and then I chased some crickets. Well, said Mrs. Pigglewiggle, you'd better come down to the barn and help me with the chores so I can go out and look for the calf. Morton was not too much help with, help with the chores. He couldn't find the pitchfork to pitch down hay for Trotsky. He couldn't find the calf meal for Heather. He couldn't find the oats for Trotsky. And when Mrs. Pigglewiggle sent him to the house to get the bucket of slop for Fanny, he came back with a crock of cherry leaf pickles and another handful of cookies. Exasperated, Mrs. Pigglewiggle said, go up and stay in your room. You are no help at all. I will finish the chores and I will find the calf. Morton's feelings were very hurt and he thought Mrs. Pigglewiggle was being unnecessarily cross. He shuffled up to the house, dragged up to his room, and slumped down on the bed. Mrs. Pigglewiggle doesn't like me, that's the trouble, he said to Lightfoot, who was asleep on his pillow. Nobody likes me. Mom and Dad sent me here to get rid of me, and now Mrs. Pigglewiggle wants to get rid of me. She'll probably send me to an orphanage. And I didn't even have lunch, and he began to cry. There's a picture of him crying on the bed. Wag, who had followed him up to the house, licked his hand and whimpered. He hated to see anyone feel sad. Wiping his eyes on his sleeve, Morton said, Well, I guess as long as nobody likes me or wants me, I better run away. I'll go up to Alaska and dig gold, and when I'm rich, I'll come back, and I won't speak to any of them, will I, Wag? Wag wagged his tail and smiled, and Morton got up off the bed and ran away. He ran down the lane, through the little woods, and down into the field where he had been picking the wild strawberries. When he got in the field, he decided that he might as well look for Pal, his frog. He went over to the place under the maple tree where he had been asleep earlier in the day. My, but it was dark and gloomy there now. The sun had gone down and the shadows were as black as caves. I'll never be able to see old Pal here, Morton said to Wag. Anyway, he's probably gone back to the brook. Let's go down there. It was pretty dark down by the brook, too, dark and wet. Morton stepped on what he thought was a hummock of grass and went clear to his knee in water. When he pulled his foot out, it made a very unpleasant sucking sound. Quick, Sam, he said to Wag. We'd better get out of here quick. So they went back across the field to the maple tree and sat down. All around them were strange night sounds, rustling of leaves, snapping of twigs, chirping of frogs, Cries of night hawks, the mournful too-hoo of Pulitzer. Morton, shiver, Morton shivered and put his arm around Wag. He wished he were in Mrs. Pigglewiggle's cozy kitchen. Then from across the valley, the coyote howled. It was a terrible sound, fierce and lonely and wild. Jumping up, Morton said to Wag, I'm going to climb up in this old maple tree and sleep. That's what hunters do. You can come too if you want, Wag. Wag just barked. So Morton climbed in the tree, high up. In fact, so high that he could see about a hundred miles. He could see the lights at the Larson's farm. He could see the stream winding through the valley. He could see the old tree up behind Mrs. Pigglewiggle's house. He could, eat, he could even see Artibus down in the field. He was bending down eating. No, she, she was bending down eating. No, she wasn't. She was licking th something. She was kind of mooing. <gasps> Maybe it was the cow. Wow! Morton shimmied down out of the tree quicker than a squirrel and ran as fast as he could over to the far corner of the field down by the stream where Artibus was. The minute she saw him, <clears throat> Mrs. The minute she saw him, Artibus started to walk away, but Morton had marked the place where she had where she had been by a wild cherry tree. He went right to the tree and there, curled up in the bushes, hidden by the young willows, was a little brown and white calf. 
Morton knelt down and patted it. He said, I found you, and you're mine, little pal. You look like a baby deer. Then from across the creek came the cry of the coyote. Artemis bellowed. Wag barked, and Morton stood up and shouted, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, I found him, I found him. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle called out, Stay there, I'm coming. Her barn lantern bobbled along through the field like a firefly. Morton was glad she had brought it. The old coyote sounded awful, he said. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, Oh, Morton, you brave boy, to wait in the dark until Artemis led you to her. I certainly misjudged you, and I'm certainly sorry. Morton said, Oh, that's all right, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Now you stay here while I go and get Nels. Come on, Wag. Nels carried the little calf up to the barn, and Artemis followed. When they had them nice and cozy in the box stall, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle said, Because you are such a brave boy, Morton, and such a wonderful finder, I'm going to give you this little calf. What do you want to name her? Her, said Morton. I wanted a little bull. Well, you have a fine little heifer, said Nels. Then I'll name her Wild Strawberry, said Morton. Oh, that's a beautiful name, said Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. I couldn't have picked a better one myself. Now, what would you save to some supper? Oh, yes, said Morton. I baked beans and made brown bread, and I think there's a cherry pie in the pantry. It was a truly remark it was truly remarkable how finding the lost calf changed Morton Heatherwick. The very next morning when Mrs. Piggle Wiggle asked him if he would pitch down some hay for Trotsky instead of ambling up the ladder, flopping down the hay, staring up at Billy the Bat, hanging upside down with the rafter, and then yelling down at Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, I can't find the pitchfork. He he ran up the ladder, found the pitchfork right away, and pitched down the hay. Then, when he was putting the pitchfork away, over by the window, hidden by a box, he found Mrs. Henry, the Plymouth Rock hen Mrs. Nelson had given Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. Mrs. Henry, the chicken, was sitting on a nest of sixteen brown eggs. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle was perfectly delighted. Mrs. Henry had been missing for days, and she was afraid a weasel had gotten her. Morton took Mrs. Henry a dish of water and some grain, and she clucked at him. That same afternoon after lunch, when Morton was away high up in the walnut tree putting up a swing, he saw, he saw Lightfoot come out of the cellar with a kitten in her mouth. Holding her head high so that the fat kitten couldn't drag her across the backyard and into the woodshed. In a few minutes, she went back to the cellar and got another kitten, and another, and another, and another. Morton could hardly wait to tell Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. He slid down the swing rope so fast his hands burned and raced into the kitchen. Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, he said, Lightfoot has four kittens, and I know where she's got them hidden. Every single day he found something, the mallard duck's nest, two old horseshoes, a bee tree, a rusty, a rusty sledgehammer, an Indian arrowhead, and Mrs. Piggle Wiggle's cameo brooch that had been lost for two months. He found that under the mash hopper in the chicken house. He put it in the egg basket, and when Mrs. Piggle Wiggle saw it, she got tears in her eyes. She was so happy. She lifted it out very gently and washed it under the water and pinned it to her dress and said, That was the very first present Mr. Piggle Wiggle ever gave me. It means more to me than anything. Thank you from the bottom of my heart, Martin. See, this is the brooch right here. Right here. Can you see that? That's the brooch. Morton said, Ah, uh, it wasn't anything, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle. I just happen to have much sharper eyes than anybody in the whole world. And he jumped off the porch and shimmied, shinnied up the, wall, the walnut tree. And that is the end of chapter five. I'm so glad you came, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.